What is up guys, welcome to the Movie Cricket Podcast for Friday the 9th of May. Mm-hmm. I am Jim and I'm joined again by Billy. Hey guys. So Billy, it's been a really busy week for movie news with the May the 4th weekend. It's been a massive week for Star Wars. Um, Star Wars has dominated pretty much all the movie news for the last week, so I think we should do that last. Yeah, let's save it till the end. We've got a lot to talk about from that. We were directly involved with a lot of things, so we've got lots to bring about this this week. That's cool. So, um, non-Star Wars movie news, go. Let's um, Next week, we've got Godzilla being released on the 15th of May here in the UK. Cool. I'm very excited for that. Are you excited for that? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, it, it looks good. They're showing a lot in the trailers, which is, you know, it's a bit worrying. Um when no one's a monster movie, the whole point of the trailer is to make you want to see what the monster looks like. Yeah. And I've pretty much seen everything so far of what Godzilla looks like. But I trust the director. He did a great job on Monsters, which was quite a low-budget film. So It's Gareth Edwards. Yeah, I think he can do a good job. I think I think you're right about the monsters. They could have sort of held back uh, Mewtwo. Mewtwo? Mewtwo? Mewtwo, it's a Pokemon, isn't it? Mewtwo. <laughs> there isn't there's a, the second winged monster. Oh, the one with the red. Yeah. Kind of. Looks pretty badass, but that's. Uh, I think they could have held that back. Would I have been a nice surprise, would it? Yeah. Although that was kind of leaked a while ago with um, the. Someone was working on the production that was kind of leaked. I saw a toy shot of that. Yeah, so it's been out for a while. I think your average movie <clears throat> goal would uh, prefer that to be a surprise. Yeah, definitely. Because I'm trying not to watch the trailers, but I've seen few glimpses of it and um, I, I just would have preferred to have had a nice surprise in the cinema it sounds like we've got a lot of things to look forward to though like Elizabeth Olsen has described the film as definitely not like Hyde it's kind of going back to its roots of the original the Japanese film and there's a strong theme of the importance of family as well as the theme of trying to control nature so it's going to be a vintage monster film I quite like what they're doing with the the change with Godzilla as an origin as well. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I was, he wasn't the original. There was a um, nuclear testing and he was yeah. mutated, and now that's a cover up. Yeah, I think it's a much better idea that the government knew about this Godzilla monster and they've been trying to kill it instead of, you know, like the whole human panicking issue. I think that's a lot better. It's a lot more interesting. Kind of reminds me of Independence Day with, you know, Area 51 and Roswell yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Quite cool. It's a lot more exciting that way. Interestingly, as well, is you kind of have the likelihood that Godzilla is going to return to being a hero of the film with another monster being involved. Okay, so cool. that's kind of like a return to the, the original films as well. So that's quite interesting. I, I'm very excited for this film, actually. In terms of actors in it as well, you've got Aaron Taylor-Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen who are going to be in Avengers Age of Ultron. That's cool. And you've got the legendary Brian Johnson. Brian Cranston. Brian Johnson. <laughs> who the fuck's Brian Johnson? We've got Brian Cranston. Didn't he play Brian for Johnson. Sheffield United? <laughs> He's definitely a Brian football. Johnson. <laughs> Brian That's Johnson. That's your, your regular stock name for a man. You can tell you I'm going to bed all day, Paul, like, aren't you? You could have Alan Smith or Brian Johnson. Hell. <laughs> Brian Dean. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a Sheffield United striker. <laughs> so we've got Brian Cranston. <laughs> that's a, a Breaking Bad. Uh, Rock of Ages, Brian one of my Cranston. favourite roles of his. Brian <laughs> Cranston from Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how to pronounce Ken Watanabe. From Inception. Inception. Yeah. He's in it. So it's, it's a great cast for that. That links us into Interstellar, actually, we're talking it about does. Inception. The, uh, the Interstellar trailer is going to debut during Godzilla screenings. I am a massive Christopher Nolan fan, so I'm very excited to see this full trailer. We've had teasers in the past. Are you um, excited to see McConaughey actually showing off more of his acting chops? You know, I am. I think he's, he's definitely on the rise in terms of acclaim as a, an actor. So I think that's going to be pretty interesting to see him in that. I think the sporting cast is pretty good as well. I think it's going to be interesting seeing him do a real sci-fi film. Yeah. Like Nolan, I mean, he's probably the most intelligent director working at the moment. Yeah. thought-provoking films think of all the complex narrative in the Batman films which will be over so many people's heads Yeah. so I think sci-fi films have had a bit of a lull recently they've not made that much money I'm hoping we get a nice intelligent sci-fi that leave sorry when I leave the cinema like Prometheus just thinking about it yeah well I think that's what it sounds what it's going to be like 
a, a small synopsis for those that don't know what Insta- Interstellar is going to be like. Um, it's a film that's going to chronicle the adventures of a group of explorers who make use of newly discovered technology and a wormhole to surpass the limitations of human space travel and conquer vast distances involved in interstellar voyage. Wow. So there's a lot of jargon in there, but it sounds a lot of fun. Don't you love the word jargon? I love jargon. Jargon should be a star Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I choose you, jargon. <laughs> We've actually been two new Pokemon And it can evolve into Jagannaut. <laughs> I'm the Jagannaut, bitch. And then Jarizard. <laughs> <laughs> Just two. Well, 30 year old guys talking about Pokemon. Oh, God. Yeah, so that's. I'm very excited for Interstellar. It's, it's, a lot of secrets that still remain about it, very little's known. If I were so. your woman, I know you're going to have to watch the trailer for the website, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to watch it. I want a nice surprise. I don't know anything. You enjoy that surprise. Yeah, I will. Fuck you. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> We've also had a, a couple of other trailers this week. I don't know if you're interested in Seth MacFarlane's A Million Ways to Die in the West. Yeah, he looked really funny from the first trailer that they put out. Yeah, I think he looks great. an amazing cast as well. Yeah, you've got Amanda Seyfried, Charlize Theron, Liam Neeson, Neil Patrick Harris, Sarah Silverman, Christopher Lloyd... Giovanni Ribisi so it's, there's a lot of people in that mm. ensemble cast it's a funny guy isn't he Seth MacFarlane because he could either be 20 or 50 mm. do you know what I mean he's got that look to him you know that kind of Hollywood his old teeth and hair you know what I found from this trailer is that it's interesting to see him in a trailer where his face is out yeah it's, it's like can he act it's, it's a bit of a test for him it's a it? real test because everyone's going to be looking at him and judging him from from what I can tell it's it looks like a romp doesn't it yeah it, look, it looks funny. Like, I love Ted, and I'm glad that they're making another one. Hmm. Um, but mm, if Seth MacFarlane's not playing a character as much, yeah. well, it'll be interesting to see how successful that is. But from the trailer, I definitely think that'll be a decent fan pleaser. It looks like it'll be hard to read what's going to happen because it looks kind of off the wall, doesn't it? Yeah. Just like anything could happen. Yeah. The jokes are coming from pff, left, from right, center. So I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'll be there to watch that opening night. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. Now, I've not actually seen this, because again, I don't like watching trailers, but there's been a trailer for the new Gotham TV series, hasn't there? Mm-hmm. And that's coming out on Fox. Soon. I'm going to cover my ears right now. Yeah. You have 20 seconds to tell the listeners about it. Go. Okay. Well, Gotham's going to be a Batman prequel based around Jim Gordon. You probably know a little bit about it. Um, there's going to be a lot of original Batman villains thrown in there. So the chronology is going to be where a young Bruce Wayne, his parents get killed. Jim Gordon's going to come in, investigate the case. That's episode one, basically. He's going to make a nice relationship with a young Bruce Wayne. And that'll set up the end episode, which will be the birth of Batman. So it's going to sort of follow at the rise of Jim Gordon being a good cop in a bad town. The tagline for the series seems to be, this is not a city for nice guys, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and this, you know what from the trailer again we were talking about Christopher Nolan and I know it's a direct Can obvious I'm thing gonna, to I'm going to start listening to you now, now you it's, the scale looks interesting but it, it looks like a TV series but yeah. the scale's ramped up a little bit but what I noticed from the trailer is the music the music is very much Dark Knight trilogy very ominous giving it a grand scale so I've got I've got high hopes for this like, I, li- I kind of liked Arrow like on Sky Atlantic here in the UK. The yeah, I caught a few episodes of it. I mean, it didn't grab me in, though. It looked cheap, didn't it? Yeah. So, here we go. Notification. <laughs> oh, it's just... Um, gone That's all right. Everyone has Facebook. Oh, wow. It's just, again, my girlfriend <laughs> interrupting. <laughs> From the other room. Brilliant. Cheers, peps. Thank you, Lauren. So, yeah. Scale looks great. Music sounds great. The only thing I was a bit weirded out by is how old Catwoman's going to be and how old Bruce Wayne's going to be because she looks like a 20 something woman mm-hmm. and obviously what, you, so she looks younger than Bruce way older like oh, Bruce, older. Bruce is obviously a, a kid in this one because in the guy you from, had your ears uh, closed it's, I, I, I know who's in it though it's the guy from OC yeah and he must be 30 well that's Jim Gordon Oh, so he's, so he's your title guy. It's a kid. If you're only clicking, I need to just look. Go on, you find that and I will so, chat a little bit. So you've got... What's it called in Gotham? Gotham. 
you've got a, a female actress playing a cat woman who's looks like about 20 and a Bruce Wayne who's a young boy and obviously they get a relationship later on in the Batman saga that's him there yeah that little kid that little kid that little kid's Batman he's Batman that little kid's Batman not quite yet but so what's his it's Bat Kid he's Bat Kid <laughs> so hang on that's a special mention of this is why there. this is why I should watch trailers because this is a little it looks like the guy this, from... this bitch here <laughs> that's Catwoman Jesus so she's a super babe and he's, he's doing a well, super boy he? he's doing well there isn't he I don't know why you're worried I'd be well excited for him if I was Batman Jesus man so yeah it, lo- it looks good it's gonna it's I... gonna take a lot of influences from Nolan by the looks of it and a non super powered superhero in terms of Jim Gordon so it looks pretty cool see I thought again I've not looked into it too much I thought he'd be 18, 19 but young Batman I didn't think he'd be a 10 year old he's young so what, what's he it's, it's what's set he directly in the print. It's nothing to do with him. It's based around Jim Gordon. Oh, that's good. As a series, so it's kind of like a, a police drama. So it's just a, he's a tiny, insignificant part of it. Yeah, but he's the anchor with Jim coming in and mm-hmm. then the big case obviously being finding the murder of Bruce's parents and then him tutoring him to make him out to be a big ma- big player in the Batman saga. So. That's cool. It could be cool. Interesting. So Very that's going to be on Fox. Um, Who's, is that going to be going to the UK? It'll probably Sky Atlantic one or something. Channel 4? Hmm. Google that as well. Let's have a quick look. I would expect it to be on uh, Sky Atlantic, do you reckon? Let's have a look. I'm not sure if it's. It's yet to secure a UK broadcaster. Oh dear. We'll be down one day ago. On then. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be travelling to America to watch that. Nightly. Weekly. Um, I think that concludes most of the week's news that isn't Star Wars, because like we said, it's been saturated with Star Wars news. Cool. Well, I'm very happy to talk about Star Wars, because it's my favourite subject to talk about. Let's dive into it then. So what do you want to tell our listeners what we were doing on Sunday? Yeah, as we mentioned last week, we hosted the Star Wars Dinner with the Stars, which was in Lancashire, a little town called Burnley, at the football club. It was organised by a friend of mine, Neil Livesey, to raise funds for the East Lancs Hospice, which is a brilliant cause, which we were very happy to be involved with. Um, it was a brilliant brilliant night. We had um, live music, Star Wars themed. We had actors at each table, including Dave Prowse, uh, Natalie Cox. From the Force um, Unleashed games. Yeah, he's one, of the, one of the stars of the Force Unleashed games. We had John Morton, Tim Dry, Tim Rose. There was, there was Bonnie Peace, did a, yeah. um, she was Aunt Baru, she did a nice little music set for us. Yeah, she was a brilliant um, musical artist, she um, entertained us. She was like a country Kate Bush, yeah. that's how I'd describe her. It was really cool, I, I really enjoyed it, it was just really surreal because, you know, you're just looking around and there's Admiral Akbar sat on one table and then, you know, there's Dak on another and then there was Lord Vader on our table he was great to hang out with Dave yeah he was a, he was a great guy we've met him a few times over the years and um, it's always good to catch up with him and for a guy who's 78 I will tell you the guy is in brilliant shape he crushed my hand at least six times well that force grip was strong <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's got that glint in his eye still he's very witty very funny he's eloquent he's, he's just a gentleman the day after the um charity fundraiser meal we hosted and um, there was a convention on too and Billy got to sit down with pretty much every actor who was there yeah that was really good and had some really interesting interviews um, about what, the, what basically what it was like working on the original trilogy and the prequels and the video games and what they're hoping for the new sequels are obviously starting to film next month yeah we got some great insights for what people are expecting and a little bit of what people know about the new film, so mm. that was really cool. We'll get onto that a little bit later. Yeah, I mean, the Star Wars community is a very tight knit community. Yeah, yeah. Um, and basically, we got quite a few little exclusives. So on the May the fourth, JJ Abrams and Lawrence Cashton posted a nice little video to let um, the fans know how the writing process was going in production for the film. Yeah, and they teased that they were putting the finishing touches to the script in London where it will be filmed and they wished everybody a happy May the 4th 
and the Disney uh, a Disney executive called Bob Iger posted a selfie with none other than Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Who hasn't aged a day. I wish he was a bit greyer. Yeah, I think he's using L'Oreal, don't you? Just for Chewbacca's. Yeah, he's worth it. Just for Wookiees. He's worth it. Yeah, just for Wookiees. But the the costume looks brilliant. Yeah. It does look brilliant. So maybe we're not going to see that, like a drastic older version of the um, characters. Maybe like Hamill and um, Harrison Ford could maybe have a bit of just for men on them as well. Yeah, maybe not. A girdle on Carrie Fisher. (laughs) Poor Carrie. Never know. She's lost a lot of weight though. She has. If we're going to bring weight <laughs> into the she, podcast. She has lost a lot. She has lost a lot. <laughs> She's looking good. Interestingly, though, one of the characters which was confirmed to come back was R2-D2. Mm. And it might be a slight spoiler alert, but it's on the website already. Um, when we were chatting to Dave Prowse at the Star Wars Dinner with the Stars, he confirmed to us that Kenny Baker's health is deteriorated quite drastically, unfortunately. And he's got a lot of problems with his chest. So the chances are that the legendary Kenny Baker won't be in the R2 unit for this film, which is a, a real shame. It's but really sad news. We're crossing our fingers that his health improves and that he can be involved because I think having him through all the films would be just fantastic. Yeah. We were lucky enough to have a bit of a chat with Kenny and he was in his he was in great spirits. Yeah, he seemed brilliant, he was having a great time with the fans, signing autographs, posing for pictures. And with his usual witty, charming self. Yeah. So, obviously, we wish him all the best with his health and hope that he gets better soon. Yeah. And while we're on the subject of Dave Prowse, we, uh, I actually sat down with Dave for a long time. We had a really good chat about things. Um, and our main exclusive from Dave was that he would love to be in Star Wars Episode Seven. Wow. So, would you like to... So now we'll play the clip in the interview yeah. for the for the fans. So this is Billy sitting down with Dave Prowse at his hotel. Um, roll the interview. But the first question, um, you've obviously played one of the most famous villains of all time. Um, so what's it like to sort of have that legacy left behind when you come to conventions? It's wonderful. It's, 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 it's marvellous to have played, you know, played this iconic villain. Yeah. Darth Vader, as I said, not, and Vader is now recognised as the, the ultimate screen villain of, of all time. And, um, and I'm just thrilled that it was me that did it. Of course, you, know, you were the man. Um, yeah, it was a combination of, you know, a combination of, I mean, a, 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 you know, fantastic costume. Yeah. Um, you know, in three three great movies that we, that we were working in. And every, you know, everything sort of fell into place. That's brilliant. Did you yeah, get to yeah. keep any of the suit? No. You didn't? No. Not the original suit. Nothing at all. No. Don't you have any memorabilia? No, I'm not one of these people that goes around stealing, stealing <laughs> things from you know from films that you work on. I've never no. ever, you know, never ever done this. You know. The only thing, the only thing I ever, I've actually, I did when I mean, you know, when I was when I was doing Star Wars, I was also the Green Cross Code Man as well. Oh really? Do you remember the Green Cross Code? I do, Green I do. Cross Code, but I was the Green Cross Code Man. That's and interesting. And at the end, I, I, I was, you know. It was the greatest job I've ever had. Really? Oh, quite far. Wow. I, I, I was Better than Vader. Star Wars and you know, he's That's incredible. So easy, yeah. And um, the um, but at the end of that, at the end of like, because I did it for about, I, I, I did it for about seven eight years. Yeah. And, and at the end of it, you know, he said, you know, um, if, if, if you'd like the suit, you can keep it. Like, so I've still got it. <laughs> so you still got that still one. Got it, yeah. But that wasn't a fair. They let you have that one. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to ask, uh, what's your fondest memory of playing Darth Vader then? Well, it's, I mean, I've, 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 I mean, it, 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 for me, it was a, it was a, um, it was a job of work. Yeah. Um, Star, you know, Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi. I mean, they were all they were all interesting movies, um, but they weren't the great fun movies that everybody thinks seems to think they are. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. And um, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I, I, I was, I, I, I was actually offered the Green Cross code at exactly the same time. Um, and I, and I, I, I say to people, I said, by, by far, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy being the Green Cross code. That's I really skills, interesting. Talking well, to all the kids, and uh, I mean, in, in, I mean, we, we actually saved hundreds of thousands of children's lives. Of course. You know, with the campaign. But no, so, I mean, it's always an, an, an interesting, an, you know, interesting film to work on. And uh, when you're working, you're working with people that you know, like Sir Alec Guinness was nice to work yeah. with him. 
Um, Peter Cushing was nice to work with him. There's all, all, all sorts of all sorts of named people um, who were very then. Um, then, then, you, then of course you had your, you know, your three Americans who were all unknown yeah. when we started. Of course, I mean, Mark of course. Carrie and Harrison. I'd worked with Carrie before actually because um, oh her my. mother um, was Debbie Reynolds. Um, she came over and did a, did a, 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 um, a tour yeah. uh, in, 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 in music halls, like you know. And um, I, I, I got invited to uh, go on as, as part of her act. Wow! Uh, yeah, and and, uh, but at the, and, uh, and one other part of her act was that she used to bring Carrie on. Right. And Carrie was only sixteen. At the yeah, time. really. Young. And she used to bring her on to sing a song, like. You know, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And so we used to stand on the side. Of the side of Used to stand on the side of the, of the stage. We carry on stage, like 16 years of age, and she and she had to, she always had to she had to finish the song with a very very high the note. High note. And we used to sit, we used to stand there thinking, is she going to make it? Is she going to make it? Is she going to make it? You know, but she was lovely. She was lovely. You know, nice kid. Oh, that's great. And then of course, you know, it was nice working with her again. Absolutely. Although, although you didn't see an awful lot of her because I think I think there was a bit of a ding dong going on between her and. and, um, and Billy D. Williams. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 I think that was well, it. that's gossip. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, they're going to be in the new film now. Oh, they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, I think we're all very, very lucky yeah, you know, to be doing Very lucky. It. To do, you know, yeah. what, are your, uh, what are your thoughts about the new film? Have you got any expectations? No, or well, no, I mean, oh, no, I think, I think they're going to be, I think they'll be, they'll be great. Uh, but I think it's going to be, you know, some of it's going to be, you know, um, a bit, um, well, I don't know, I don't know. How things are going? You know, they're, 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 you know, all, lots of lots of the older people are coming back in. I mean, there's some talk about R2D2, uh, Kenny yeah. Baker coming. Yeah. Back. Well, Kenny Baker really is ill. He's an ill yeah, guy. He's not very however, well. he's going to do. However, he's going to reprise his role. I do not know. Um, you know, th- things things like that. And, uh, um, so, have you spoken to him about that or anything or no, about going back? Him, he's going to be here. He's, he's yeah, he's at the yeah, convention yeah. tomorrow, isn't yeah, he's he? Going to be here. Yeah. yeah. No, but I can't see. But he's, he's so he's so he's, he's in such a terrible state with his terrible chest. And all, you know. Really, I such a shame. I can't honestly see. It, you know, although I mean, I, he, he, they put him in the they put him in the they put him in the in, in the unit, and he doesn't have to do it all. Well. No, I suppose yeah, not. Yeah, so, no, so I, I, you know, I'm you sure know. they could get him down on the set it's, it's, and just have him oh, yeah, have it's, a it's, it's a name. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the main thing JJ wants to do is sort of get. Um, Get the original cast, oh, everything yeah, yeah, involved, yeah, and just yeah. just so it feels like yeah, a return. I think that's the idea. They invite me back. Yeah, was it no? Yeah. Was it never a call? Well, no. Well, I thought Darth Vader got killed. Of off, course, of he? course. But so, yeah, so I mean, no it, sort of little cameos. I mean, it'd be lovely to come back. I mean, I've just been on TV, been on TV three times this week. Um, you know, talking about my involvement in the movie. Yeah. And and everybody says, "Oh, are you going to come back?" And I said, "Well, no. I'd love to come back. You know." They're already they're already ensconced in in Plymouth Studios. They're already yep. with, you know, working down there, um, and I'd like to come back as an, as another character. You know, yeah, be lovely. Whether whether it's a masked character or and well, I mean, I've never seen facially, so I could. Of I'd course, she's like anyone. Come back and, and play some some other role. Maybe you should make the call yourself. We should no, get on there no, to no, JJ. No. <laughs> I don't know those sort of things. No. That's that's a that's really interesting though. It'd be a shame if you couldn't get something like yeah, that. Yeah, be lovely. It's free yeah. films though. I know. Could be I any know, of them. I know. Don't I have know. to be this one. Oh. <laughs> So thanks very much for that, I'll, uh, and I'll see you on the table. I'm sure I'll buy you a drink or something later. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. So that was you. Tra- <laughs> that was you chatting with Dave Prowse. <laughs> Oh, that sounded good. How was it meeting the Darth, Dark Lord himself? You know what? It was amazing. He has so many interesting stories to talk about. Like he's obviously brilliant friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou <laughs> Ferrigno, and I was well into that. He was telling me stories about him and Arnie, and that was that was amazing. It's incredible, um, isn't it? Yeah, it's really humbling actually. It's nice to know as well that <clears throat> he's still got a lot of love for Star Wars because he's made it quite publicly clear that his favourite role, as mentioned in the interview, was a green cross code man. Yeah. But the fact that he's still actively, you know, going around um, to these conventions is great and in your exclusive interview he reveals that he'd love a role in new films. Yeah, yeah. His direct quote was, if they'd invite me back, oh we've just we've just listened. We don't yeah. need that. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't need that quote. But yeah, he's, he's, he would love to come back as a, a new character. We obviously never saw his face. So we'd love to, he'd, he could play any role, really. Mm. He could be a small cameo. He could be anything up to a, a whole decent character. Even just seeing his face in the background would be interesting just for the fans. Yeah. Because if you, if you remember in, um, I think it was Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith, Anthony Daniels had a cameo yeah. um, with his actual face. I think no, that was Attack of the Clones. And Jeremy Bullock... 
I think he was in Revenge of the Sith as a pilot, and you just got to see his face for a, for a split second. So they've done it in the past. I know there's not the, they're not on the best terms. Um, well, Lucasfilm wasn't on the best terms with Dave Prowse over a fallout 30 years ago, but now it's in the hands of Disney, and they seem to be doing a lot of fans of, fan service with the Marvel films. Yeah. I don't see why they wouldn't do it with these Star Wars films. Absolutely. I think it would please a lot of fans to have some familiar faces back. It would add some added warmness to the films give it a family feel and I think that'd be great I think yeah. that'd be great for Disney it's just a shame that Vader's dead because he's the ultimate villain the most infamous villain of all time as Dave reminded me yeah. <laughs> many times <laughs> whilst choking you <laughs> he was a good guy no it was great to sit down with Dave that was really good fun um, we also were lucky enough to sit down with none other than Dak Rolter oh cool Luke's gonna John Morton he was a lovely man we had a really good interview with him and he revealed a lot of things to us and we've had a lot of traffic from that this week mm. in terms of what he told us about Star Wars episode That set seven. the internet alight. It did. We were very pleased with the response for that. So it's worth mentioning that John's a very well connected member of the Star Wars community. Yeah. He works with StarWars.com doing blogging. Yeah, and what's interesting about what he's doing right now is he's creating a website and a story as a writer, where he's creating a sort of DAC blog mm -hmm. in a sort of alternate universe which runs alongside Star Wars Rebels, which is coming out soon. Yeah. And although it's not working under a Disney banner, he's hoping that it will do in the future. Um, he's writing it for the Star Wars universe to sort of aid the understanding of what's going on in the Star Wars Rebel universe and link in the prequels to the original film. So I think that's pretty interesting what he's doing right now. We're looking forward to hearing more about that. It is interesting. He and also had a few tidbits he about did. the how Rebels could possibly connect into Episode 7. Yeah, and that was what got a lot of interest this week. About did. the how Rebels could possibly connect into Episode 7. Yeah, and that was what got a lot of interest this week. So we'll play... We've had a lot of people asking for the voice clips... Mm -hmm. So we'll put those up. So you suggest to keep an eye on Rebels in terms I th of I think Rebels, if you, want, if you wanted my informed opinion from a distance, is that the, 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 the key... The key that's going to make this work is Rebels. That's very interesting. Rebels, when Rebels gets kind of set up, fine tuned, rolled out, um, that's going to point in the direction that, uh, episode, for episode 7. That's amazing. That's really interesting. Yeah. 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 And those have been played there. <laughs> wow, they were great voice clips. They were quick. <laughs> so, yeah. He had some interesting remarks to make, didn't he? Yeah, I was I was really uh, very excited by what he had to say in terms of the characters being developed in Star Wars Rebels. They'll play through the background of the original trilogy, mm. surviving in that universe and then expanding further into the new films, which I think is a really interesting idea. Obviously, this hasn't been confirmed by Disney or Lucasfilm just yet. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll look forward to seeing where that goes. So... Another thing that came out this week about Star Wars is a potential working title. And this was broken over on our friends at Ain't It Cool News. Um, and they, they reported that the potential working title for Star Wars Episode Seven is The Ancient Fear. Wow. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest straight away and say that I absolutely hate that. I hate it. It's a direct antagonism to what A New Hope is. Yeah. It's, it couldn't be more blatant. It really does, with the greatest respect to Ain't It Cool, it sounds like a fan rip-off. Mm. It sounds like a fan's idea of getting an a ambiguous title out there that's going to grab news. I think it's just it's just the first name you'd think up. What's yeah. the opposite of A New Hope? It's just, it's just, you know. I really can't see that being the title. But there's been a lot of other rumour titles. I think one of them was Rise of the Jedi Order. I don't really like that either. I think, I think it's a, they could get a much cooler title than that. With it being JJ and Lawrence, I think it'll be... They're not silly. The first film has got to be fun and yeah. succeed. And I think it'll be a, a fun title. I think it won't be as threatening because it, they're just you know sowing the seed for what's going to be happening mm -hmm. later on. It can get serious and dark later. Yeah. But for now, I just want to see a return to the fun Star Wars. We have to put it with three dire 
soulless, terrible films. Yeah. Um, and I just want to see some fun again. I just want that, you know, the tone and the the charm of the original three. And as I think we seem to go back to that, have a nice fun title. It's got to be a romp. It's got to yeah. be an adventure. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't want any nonsense. And I don't, you know what I mean. Ancient Fear to me just sounds a bit. It sounds like a straight to DVD film, yeah, doesn't it? Sounds like Nicholas Cage or Steven <laughs> Seagal, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't. I'm not excited by that title at all. Interestingly, uh, Latino Review immediately rebuked the claim and said that they actually have the official working title. Wow. And they're planning on releasing that soon. Um, so we'll keep an eye on there. We'll bring you any any updates on that. But we've all got to remember that a working title doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. Yeah, Return true. of the Jedi worked under the name of Blue Harvest all the way through. Yeah. And then so, it was Revenge of the Jedi. It was Revenge of the Jedi. And then a week before or a month before they thought, Jedi's don't take revenge. <laughs> it's almost like George Lucas makes it up as he goes along. <laughs> Who knew? Even though we love him. And we hate him a bit. <laughs> we love him. But we're a little bit hate him. A little bit hate him. But we love him. <laughs> This is podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> that just about wraps up this week's biggest movie news. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm Jim. I'm Bill. And we'll see you next week. 